My name is Jaime Bosch, and I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Barcelona. And I'm working at the hospital clinic, where I run a hepatic hemodynamic lab since 1982. So it's a long time that I've been there, and it's my pleasure to be here today with you. The article is about the main improvements in the knowledge of portal hypertension in the past two decades and how this may lead to uh, significant changes in therapy. The subject is very important because patients with cirrhosis usually die either from complications of portal hypertension or from hepatocellular carcinoma. And most of them will die from complications of portal hypertension if not transplanted before. So it's really an important subject it, since portal hypertension is on the basis of the main complications of cirrhosis, of variceal bleeding, ascites, hepatorenal syndrome, infections, portal systemic encephalopathy, and so on. So it's really uh, something that has a dramatic impact in chronic liver diseases. There have been dramatic improvements in the knowledge because portal hypertension was classically considered to be uh, a passive consequence of the increased resistance to portal blood flow through the cirrhotic liver, which is very hard, and so passively there was a congestion of the splagnic organs. And it was until 1980 that it was not shown that the contrary was true, that what happened is that the splagnic circulation was not congested, but hyperemic. So we had an apparent paradox, which is a system which has both an increased outflow pressure and an increased inflow of blood. And knowing that led to uh, the introduction of effective pharmacological therapy for portal hypertension based on the use of drugs that decrease the splanchnic blood flow. The first introduced was vasopressin, and then substituted by better analogs such as terlipressin and somatostatin. More important, probably, was the introduction of beta blockers, and that had, had an in, enormous impact on the natural history of portal hypertension. Suffice it to say that, for instance, the uh, incidence of the first bleeding from esophageal varices has been reduced by near half by the beta blockers, and that the mortality from acute variceal bleeding in 20 years has dropped from, uh, let's say, it was. 45% in 1990, and it's now uh, less than 20%, 15% on average in recent cities. The current research is mainly focused on the causes of hepatic endothelial dysfunction, which is the underlying uh, abnormality that uh, leads to this vasoconstriction within the liver, this uh, increased hepatic vascular tone. And this endothelial dysfunction uh, implies that the in, in the thibium in the liver does not secrete enough vasodilators, mainly nitric oxide, and on the other side produces too many vasoconstrictors. And so this creates an imbalance towards vasoconstriction. The increased hepatic vascular tone is parallel by the increased uh, fibrogenesis and the increased mechanical uh, uh, in, uh, mechanical distortion of the liver vasculature and increase in the hepatic resistance. So the importance of this concept is that when we act in experimental models on this uh, endothelial dysfunction, we improve both the hepatic vascular tone and fibrogenesis. So this, this has been a big step forward because it signals the way to go uh, for clinical applications. And in part, we have achieved part of it because we have now agents that have been used in animals and in, in phase one, phase two, and phase three uh, um, studies in humans as well, uh, showing that it is possible to uh, improve uh, the survival of patients with cirrhosis even by using drugs that improve hepatic endothelial sinusoidal function. So, for instance, using statins. 
the history of the of the research on portal hypertension has been this the history of a success in translational research. We have been able to translate into clinical practice all the advances in 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 the knowledge of the pathophysiology of portal hypertension. And this has represented an enormous advance in terms of reduction of, of the burden of the disease, an improvement in patient comfort and in patient survival. And I think there is much to, to do in the future, and I encourage people to continue to, to, to read and study about portal hypertension, since what is nowadays known will be out outdated in 10 years or in five years, hopefully.